So we are here in the Coolidge Auditorium of the Library of Congress, uh, and we're here with Cora Harvey Armstrong and her family. Uh, Cora is a wonderful, ja uh, I'm sorry, a wonderful gospel singer, <laughs> pianist, um, band leader, and choir director, and preacher, and many other mm -hmm. things. And so we are going to talk to her about her career and her life. And we have her two sisters and her three nieces here as well. So why don't you each say your name for the record? Start with me, Clara Jackson. And I'm Cora Armstrong. I'm Virginia B.B. Young. Mm -hmm. Clarissa Jackson. Kimberly Young. Ruth Young. Well, welcome to all of you, and we're really glad to have you here Thank at the you. Library of Congress. And you gave us a magnificent concert uh -huh. earlier today, they which it. should also be on video on the Library Yay! of Congress website. So, Yay! <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your family starting out. I know that. Um, that you have a grandfather who uh, has been important to your yeah. songwriting and, yeah. and your career. So tell, tell me a little bit about that, and any of you can speak about it. Okay. Him. Well, we, we, um, when we were little girls, before we started school, we gave Papa, which was Reverend Watson Harvey, that's our dad's daddy, mm -hmm. um, we gave him a talent show out in the front yard. And we were able to sing uh, in harmony. And so when Ma got home, he asked her, did you know that these children can sing? And so we did a song for Mama, because we did the, the talent show for Daddy, I mean, for Papa, so you know. And that's how it all got started, mm -hmm. standing out in the yard, standing up there giving Papa a talent show. Wonderful. And, and who was he? What was what, he? What, was what our he grandfather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was our dad's daddy. All right. Yeah. So wonderful. And so that sort of got you started in yeah. the in and then as career. people um, heard, you know, you know, when, you, when your mom, mom, our mother sang, and so she sang at funerals, she sang in the choir at church and all of that. So uh, she would get invitations to go sing at the neighboring churches. And so some kind of way, she started taking us with her. Mm -hmm. And then people started hearing that we could sing, and then so people started inviting the Harvard sisters right. to come and sing something. I will make you fishers of men. <laughs> Right. So, you know, that's, and it just grew from that. So how old were you at that time? Oh, when God, we were young because we hadn't started first grade. I was not in first grade because we were all at home with Papa, right? Yeah, right. That, that would make us, I guess, three, four, five. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so, so not, not, not long after that is when I started taking piano lessons with Miss Elsie Green, uh, Elsie Holmes Rania, right. and I was about five or six years old. And Ma was the one playing. Mm -hmm. And we were singing. A lot of times we did, you know, with no music, but then when we started singing with her, she was the one playing. And then as I grew and got a little bit better, a little bit better, then I started playing. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of like just grew and grew and grew. And that became the, the Harvey family group yeah. that we've mm -hmm. heard about? Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yes. And did, did you play mostly in your own church or did you go to other uh, places as well to play? Well, um, I was, uh, let's see. I was playing at the at the home church, mm -hmm. and all of, I mean they sang in the choirs, right? Um, and Mom sang in the choirs. Daddy was singing in the choir too at about that time, and so um, as a group, unless they had something special, we didn't really too much sing as a group at the church. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people would invite us to come to other places, and we we did most of our singing at other churches. I see. Yeah, right. we did a homecoming one year. Um, we did a concert one year, and um, our aunt Mary Hill was our narrator, and Ma and the three of us did this concert for the church, but that was after we were pretty we were teenagers, mm -hmm. yeah. So you, uh, you talked about uh, your starting piano lessons. Mm -hmm. um, how did that get started? I mean, hated it, man, really? hated it, hated it. <laughs> hated it so bad because everybody else is outside playing. And every day, 30 minutes, Ma made me practice. Every day the Lord says I got to sit up at that piano and practice. I didn't want to. And for looked like for the all, my whole life, it just looked like all I could do was a C scale. Right. C scale, C scale, a back and a forth. And so um, I really hated it. But Miss Elsie was very a stickler. And she's still alive. She lives in Baltimore. She was a stickler about reading and playing what you see. Because I could hear what it was supposed to sound like after I played it once or twice. Mm -hmm. So I just tried to imitate what I was doing. And she insisted, no, no, you have to play it the way you see it. And, um, and I, I'm glad for it now. Back then, I wasn't all that happy about it. I'm going to tell you, I used to be so angry with music. You know how you watch uh, TV shows and the credits come up? Anything that had music coordinator, and I would make pretend I was shooting them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I 
kids you That's not, hardcore, I huh? did, I hated it that much. <laughs> And these two, oh, wait, no. No, 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 no. these two started out taking <laughs> piano lessons too. But, but. It, it was mama's dream that all three of us would be able to play piano. And so mama would go work so she'd have the extra money to pay for three sets of music lessons. Right. So mama would work on Saturdays and daddy's responsibility was to take us to music lesson. And this one Saturday, <laughs> Me and Kalu started me. crying because we didn't want to go. Because we hadn't practiced. No, and Daddy didn't <laughs> want to hear it. And so that Saturday, Daddy let us stay home. And that was the beginning of our, of our not taking <laughs> lessons anymore. But for some reason, I don't know why, Cora had to go that Saturday. I cried too, and they wouldn't let us <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is crazy because <laughs> me, mom made me and Kim take piano lessons, but we took piano lessons with Reverend Brown. And we still had that red van at the time that didn't have no air in it. And I remember her taking us down there, and I used to hate going down there too because Reverend Brown was hard on you and I hadn't practiced. <laughs> and we was in the van, and I was telling me, me, mom, don't make me go in there. Don't make me go in there. I, I don't want to play the piano. I don't want to play the piano. And finally, she let us stop taking that. We took what? Maybe two. <laughs> Two, maybe three lessons, and she just was like, all right, I mean, I'm not going to make y'all do it. And Reverend Brown that she's talking about, he's still alive, too. Yeah. His name is Reverend Robert D. Brown. Mm -hmm. He was my third piano teacher. Okay. Yeah, Miss Elsie was my first. A lady by the name of Mrs. Phillips in Bowling Green who's going to heaven, she was my second. And Reverend Brown was my third. And Reverend Brown had a little red stick, teeny little red he still stick. still had it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if something wasn't quite right the way you're looking at, the way you're playing and what you're seeing, Reverend Brown would tap your fingers with this red <laughs> stick. Man, I'm going to tell you, many days I wanted to tell him a couple of things. <laughs> That's, a, that's some old-fashioned piano teaching. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, but, I mean, so you didn't want to go to these lessons, but now you're glad you did, right? You don't <laughs> know how glad I am that the Lord, and, and I know it was just all God, because he knew that something was in me, but you just don't know what I had to go through. My, my life um, has been a real spiral downward. And um, these two tried their best, um, along with mom and daddy, to try to get me to hear from heaven and, and come to my senses. But I had men on my mind. And uh, one in particular who the Lord took him home um, that I thought, <laughs> I, I don't know what I thought about him, but all, he was a help to get me downward. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so grateful that, um, all of that I learned through all of those relationships, through all of that hardship, I told somebody, it's in the valley where you grow. And so there's nowhere to go but up. Right. And I, all of that has made me who I am now. All of that. And it couldn't have happened any other way. Right. Yeah. So you alluded in the concert to that a little bit, too, that yeah. there was some drinking and some oh, drugs man. involved in that. And, and going to, uh, every, every Sunday, I'm at church, because at home church, I'm the, I'm the musician at the home church. Um, every Sunday, I'm there. I'm at Virginia State the rest of the week. Every Sunday, I am in the church, because mm -hmm. I needed the church to check. Right. No matter how small it was, I used that check to support my habit and to keep fellas interested, because I had a little bit of money. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. I remember one Sunday, everybody's quiet. And I'm, 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 I feel like there's something going on, but I just don't know what's happening. When I open my eyes, Reverend Smith, Reverend A.B. Smith is standing up in the pulpit looking at me. The choir is sitting, everybody's looking at me, ready for, ready for the invitation on him. I'm there to sleep. Had no clue what was going on. But it was just, don't y'all take none of this up. Um, <laughs> it, it just that kind of lifestyle that I had chosen could have been dead years ago. I had one husband that really was trying to kill me for a season. And the Lord kept me alive and got me out of that relationship. And I'm so thankful for all of it because it helped make me who I am now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's been a struggle. It's been hard, but it helps me in writing music because I know some things. I know what God is able to do. It helps us as we minister, all of us, because these, these birds right here, they, they're, they're growing and learning too, 
but they're still, you know, in the pro beginning processes. You know, they're like, you know, 20 some years younger than us. But it's just the fact that what you got to go through helps mold you into whoever it is that God is going to use to minister. We couldn't have sung like that today if we hadn't lived through some of these things that we've lived through. Can I, can I say something? Sure. Because, see, uh, me and Kalu had to suffer, too. Yeah. Because during the time that Cora was dating and, and, and later married the first husband, uh, we would have engagements to sing, and we would be standing there with Mama waiting for Cora, and either Cora wouldn't show up or either she would leave early. Well, I couldn't play the piano because we I quit. <laughs> Claire Lou couldn't play the piano because she quit. Mama thought she could play the piano. <laughs> but really, she couldn't. <laughs> and, and, and people would be expecting the Harvey family. And mm -hmm. Cora was a big portion of that. Mm -hmm. And we would just have to do what we would just have to make do. And I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I guess that made us who we are. <laughs> oh, but I, I think the joy that you all have as a family and being together on stage and also here in this interview just comes out from all of these experiences. That yeah. Together, and see, so. we live in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, Kim and Ruthie just recently, uh, as last year I think, moved to Richmond. But all the rest of us, we live right in Newtown. Mm -hmm. I live b in, with Bibi and her husband, and Clara lives right across the yard with her family over there with Riz. Yeah, they, we all right there together. And that's where you grew up, right? Mm -hmm. Newtown. Yeah. Right there. So where is that in Virginia? It's in um, the eastern, uh, the uh, northern end of King and Queen County. King and Queen is about 75 miles long, but only 10 miles wide. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So we live in the north end, mm -hmm. um, and we went to school at Lawson Elementary in the north end. The high school sits right in the dead middle of the county, and so both ends come together to go to high school. That's where we went to our high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're right there in King and Queen, right in Newtown. Right. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Virginia State. Yeah. Uh, talk about your association with the university. Oh my goodness gracious! Um, I, I got there in '74. And I was a real good student for two semesters because I didn't know anybody. I was scared to death. And mama said, you are not going to be a mortician. You are going to school to be a school teacher. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. But she said, oh, yes, you will. And so I got there first two semesters. I'm great. My third semester, which is my second year, I heard the gospel choir. At that time, Larry Bland, great musician, was directing the choir during that time. And I joined the choir, singing in the alto section. And Larry found out I could sing and play. And um, so I got to sing a lot of solos and stuff. And then finally, he decides to retire. I'm, you know, here I am. I'm, I, I'm put right into place for to be the next director. Um, and I enjoyed that so much, traveling all over the place with the choir. Um, of course, my uh, grade point average dropped to, you know, zero. <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't going to class. I had changed my major by that time from elementary education to music education. Man, I, I just blew it. But I was directing the gospel choir. And back then, it was just all oh God. Let, they let me stay on campus with free room and board until about, I left in about 80 or 81. Um, because the students in the gospel choir got a half hour credit. They didn't have to pay me a salary, they just let me stay there and eat. Right. And I'm just directing the choir. Had to go to Florida to a conference uh, to sing. They couldn't insure me on the bus, so they paid for me to get a Greyhound to ride from Petersburg to Florida. Oh man, that was an experience. And I, when I got there, and when I got, I had to wait for them almost a day for them to drive the other bus. And I'm sitting in the lobby because there's no place for me to stay. And it, you know, experience like that where my mom and daddy never knew some of the stuff that I was doing. Cause they thought I was at school. Right. <laughs> I'm in Florida. <laughs> but you know, it all taught me something. And I never did uh, finish my music degree. Um, and, um, but I'm thankful that um, two years ago, I got a master's degree from the School of Theology at Virginia Union University. All right, congratulations. Thank you, sir. That was hard work, but I'm yeah. so glad for it. Thank All right. You.
So one other thing that you do is you, you write and compose a lot yeah. of songs. How did you begin as a songwriter? You know, I don't exactly remember how that came, but um, it just, I, f I found that I could write poetry. Our granddaddy, the same papa that we sang for out in the yard, he was a great poet. And uh, one of our cousins who was here today, she's got this huge book of Papa's poems um, that he's written over the years. And I can write poetry too. Well, um, I just started doing it at Virginia State because this, um, we did an album called Every Day with Jesus. And I wrote most of the music on the album. Um, so, you know, it just kind of like came to me. I actually, God has blessed me so much. I can, I have been, I've had the opportunity more than one time to go to sing for um, a pastor's anniversary or something. And I can look at the program and read the pastor's history or whatever. And the Holy Spirit will give me lyrics to write, you know, right there. And so it's time to sing. I'm singing this song about the pastor or whoever it is. You know, he just blesses me to do that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for that. I'm, I'm just for me. That, 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 that's one of my favorite songs because mm -hmm. of the fact that God used the scripture, because a lot of my songs now are scripture, scripturally based. But, um, and I've written a love song because my third husband really was my friend and I loved him dearly. And we were together um, to, for me to sing at a wedding. And the night of the wedding rehearsal, Anthony was so sweet to me because we were staying in this dump, but he was just being so sweet. The song came and it said, I thank God for giving me you. And I wrote that that night in this dump and sang it at the wedding the next morning. And every now and then I still get the opportunity to sing it even though he's gone down, you know, mm -hmm. wherever. Yeah. But you know, I do, somebody else is coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the right one is going to be coming after a while. All right, yes. all yes. right. So, so you mentioned how, you know, that lyrics will come to you. What about the music? Where does, does is that a just similar? Just kind of sitting, uh, well, it, it just kind of comes. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of comes. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how, I, I, I know it's God, but it just kind of comes. It doesn't, you know, I don't think about it. It just kind of comes. I remember one day I was sitting at the, at the high school. Bibi is a school teacher. And she was, uh, I used to substitute at the, at the high school, and they had this one choir class. Not, not really a choir class, it was the class where they held all the problem children. And they said, that, you know, you, you help them learn to sing, do something with them. And I'm, I said something about Jesus in the classroom, and this boy speaks up and he said, hey, you can't say Jesus in here. I said, go report me, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, this, this, the terrible day, right, terrible day. At the end of school, all of them are gone. I'm sitting at the old piano in the choir room. I'm crying. I'm mad at God. I have lost everything I had because after Anthony, I lost everything. I'm substituted in a school system. I don't want to be a teacher. I'm hating all of this. And you've, you've taken all my stuff from me. I try to do the best I can for you. You don't love me. You just treat me like this. Sitting at that piano, a song comes that says, I am here for you. Troubled thoughts, soul unrested, burning down is your patience tested. Seems like every day there's nothing new. So tired of working, but you can't go home. Can't even talk on the telephone. But Jesus whispers, I am here for you. Man, 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 man. Just phenomenal how he just gives me stuff. And last year, I got the opportunity to sing that song at the Hampton Ministers Conference down in Hampton, and the Holy Spirit moved in that place. And I mean to tell you, because everybody looks like is going through something, yeah. but then they hear that even though all the stuff you gotta go through, that Jesus whispers and tells you, I'm right here for you. Huh. <laughs> Just makes you feel good on the inside, you know? Beautiful song. Right? It is, it is, it is. It really is, and I'm thankful for it. Because he could have given it to anybody. He gave it to me. Yeah. <laughs> On one of the nastiest days of my life. <laughs> I want to smack that boy so bad. <laughs> but you can't do that. <laughs> so speaking of hard days and, yeah. and hard times, you've alluded in other interviews that I've read to your father's death being kind of a turning oh, point. Oh, man, yes, 1999. 
when the Lord took daddy, daddy was a uh, mama. Mama would fuss at the drop of a hat. You always knew that if you did something wrong, she was going to get you. Um, she chased Calhoun one time with Calhoun. <laughs> but, you know, it, she was the fusser, and she was the one that was like the disciplinarian. Daddy was totally different. He was the comical one in the family, and he, um, he was my, he helped me. He didn't fuss at me. He, I would know that he was displeased, but he would do what he could to help me. When the Lord took him home, and Ma and I were standing there with him at the hospital, um, and we saw him leave us, I just didn't know what to do. And during the time leading up to his funeral service, I was sitting, I had a, a home then, and I was sitting in the bathroom by the mirror, and I prayed, and I asked God, look, I don't know what to do. And I started crying, and, and I, I, I know that you are somewhere Help me. He started changing my life that day. He started changing my life that day. And I can't tell you that everything was perfect, but he just did things in such a way where I wasn't handling things the way that I used to. I still had issues with, you know, fellas, because I like fellas. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it was different. It was different, and I really accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior for real. I mean, because, I mean, you call his name, you sing his songs, you know. That's not a real relationship. We have a real relationship now, mm -hmm. and I know that I'm saved, and I'm thankful that even as he took Daddy, he gave me his spirit, and he gave me himself to replace and to make that spot in my heart um, filled with him, with him. And, and I know I know that daddy and mom are just so proud of us. I know they are. And I know that they watched us today from that cloud, that red cloud of witnesses. And I know they're cheering us on. And I'm, I'm so thankful for it. Things that I wish I could apologize to them for, for putting them through, like telling Callum and BB that I'm so sorry for <laughs> some of the stuff that I did. I wish I could, you know, have the opportunity to tell them. I, I know I kept them up late lots of nights. And I cost them a lot of money. I cost them a lot of time and health. But I, I know that they understand now, and I know they forgive me. Yeah. But he, that changed my life. That changed my life for mm -hmm. real. And what, what about the sisters? Do you, do you have anything to, to add to the, the story? We are very boring compared to... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But, but, you know, but also, we felt like we had to be good. <laughs> we, we had to be good, because I, I can remember, and, and this didn't just start either, I can remember coming home with a report card in grade school, and I would have A's and B's, you know, and I would be trying to show mom my report card. Well, we all had to line up, even though we weren't in the same school, and of course, and uh, Kalu had hers, Kalu was wonderful, and then Cora had hers. <laughs> And then, um, of course, Mama would look at Cora, and Cora's had something that wasn't right in conduct, or she had a D or F in something. And it was like Mama would forget all about our report cards, and she would just lay into Cora. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> And I, and, I said, and, and I guess that's why being kids, me and Kalu became best buddies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we became be, be, best friends. And so, and then Cora would kind of be doing her thing, but we kind of stuck together kind of tight because Cora always had some, something going on. <laughs> <laughs> And, but, and we did too, but we got a chance to fly under that's, the radar. That's right. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, not me, because I was the quiet this shy one. This is the quiet one. shy one, yes. <laughs> oh, well. and she got married first. Mm -hmm. Well, it's lovely that you were all here on stage, though, yeah. now performing, too. That's a, that's oh, a whole yeah. other it's part. Wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful, because it's like we've been together all our lives. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk, you, you, you had alluded to some trips around the world. I mean, yeah. Japan, for mm -hmm. example. What was that like and how did oh, that come my about? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, I, I was a part of the um, Gospel Music Workshop of America for a while. And I met a guy by the name of Ronnie Rucker, who was the director of the Gospel Music Workshop of Japan. Mm -hmm. he, was, um, he came to the United States and bought a J Japanese choir with him. And he just, you know, we just hit it off. 
and he had a conference that was going to be coming up in Japan, asked me if I would be interested in coming. I said, man, yeah. And um, the first year I went was in Kobe, Japan. And, and um, I taught a week's uh, class of piano. And it was so amazing to me because the students videotaped my hands. The very next day they could come back and do just what I did mm, yesterday. Wow. I mean, it was phenomenal. And then at the end of the week, we did this concert where I was the guest soloist, choir of over 600 Japanese people on this huge stage, and they sing English. They sing gospel music in English, even though some of them don't understand what they're saying. It was phenomenal, <laughs> and, and it was so funny because everywhere we went, because I'm a, I'm a big black woman, <laughs> and I, at that time I had hair, and I had a big gray afro, bigger than yours, <laughs> and I had this big, and I, so I'm walking around, and all of these people about this height, <laughs> <laughs> all around me, full of love, the most mm. loving people I ever met in my whole life. And it was wonderful. Everywhere we went, it was always, you know, and, and the Lord gave me a chance just to love on people. So uh, that was wonderful. The very next year, he invited me back, and we were in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And that was even bigger. And so it, it was just wonderful. I haven't been back since that time. But it was just so wonderful. Now, this guy by the name Earl Bynum is how I got to Italy. Mm -hmm. um, he lives in the Hampton Roads area. He traveled there for years and years and years, every year around the Christmas time. And one year he invited me to come and go and sing with his group um, as a guest soloist in Italy. And we traveled to different cities every day. And I had never done anything like that before, you know, on a constant basis like that, days and days. We stayed two weeks. But it was wonderful. And they called me Mama Cora in Italy. Mm -hmm. they called me Mama Cora. And um, we would, every day we were in a different city. Cold as ice, man. But it was wonderful. Big auditoriums and, I mean, just beautiful places. And um, then uh, we, I went with him, I think, for about five years. And then one year he asked, us, us to go together with him and that was really good because <laughs> I was used to being with these birds you know and so we had a really good time. BB didn't enjoy <laughs> as much I think as Claire and, and I, I did, did. <laughs> you know because BB was always wondering about what the children like are doing home. you know we calling home and all that kind of <laughs> Claire was more they all right I don't need right. to call them. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so fun. And on YouTube is some of the concerts that we actually did in some of the cities in, uh, in Italy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we went to Italy. We went to, um, we went a part of, um, it was three different countries we went to one of the years that we were in. I can't remember now the names. But it was just so great to see other people, other cultures. And they, they, they just love, and our, every show we ended with, oh, happy day. Mm -hmm. And everybody is on their feet and dance. One in and, and Venice, Venice, scariest thing I ever did was trying to get in the little boat um, <laughs> with ice on the steps. Here's this big black woman trying to get down these steps <laughs> and get in this boat that's way down there. <laughs> and honey, I froze. I froze and I couldn't move. And one, our drummer at that time was Ricky Richardson. Ricky got... I know the Holy Spirit moved him, and Ricky, some kind of way, moved me so that when I fell into that boat, I fell into a man's arms. And I, took, I cried and cried and cried, but then when we got to the other side, it was much easier. That was the place where we sang, and at Oh Happy Day, the floor started changing color lights, and everybody got to dancing. <laughs> oh, it was so cool. It was so cool. It was so cool. Mm -hmm. Lots of experiences. I almost fell off the stage one time, and Earl caught me from the back, both his hands up on my butt, trying to keep me from hitting the floor. <laughs> I mean, stuff that just happens, you know? Right. But it was just... You just gotta laugh and keep moving forward, you know? Yeah. Not be so, you know, stuck in, you know, cause I mean, life is hard enough, so just enjoy yourself, you know? And I think that that's what we try to get across when we're singing and on stage and stuff. We, yeah, we don't get to practice like we want to. You know, all of us got separate lives and we, we get the opportunity to practice a little bit, but even if you make a mistake, so what? 
you got an audience of one up here, and he doesn't care about any of that. And the folks that are here, some of them don't care about the mistakes either. They just feel good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This man told me one time, plays that uh, there's been a play written about my life called Living in the Light, mm -hmm. and then I've portrayed Mahalia Jackson a few times. This man came and told me, um, he said, lady, I tingle, I tingle. And I knew what that was. I knew that was the Holy Spirit. But he didn't know. He said, lady, I tingle, I tingle. And I said, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with Earl Bynum's group, yeah. he, he actually, they recorded some of your songs. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh -huh. And were you in, were, did you record with them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a song I wrote on his CD, on the, their, their church has a CD. And there's a song that I wrote called Keep On Believing. I wrote that song for a nursing class um, at a, a school in Richmond called the Adult Career Development Center. And these kids, inner city kids, uh, that were trying to get licenses to be nurses. And I sang for their graduation. And God gave me this song to tell them to keep on believing in yourself and your dream. Keep on believing because you're closer than you seem. Just keep pushing forward. Keep taking a step because you know that God is not through with you yet. Keep on believing in yourself and your dream. And uh, that, that, that really has been a blessing to a lot of people from what I understand. Yeah. All right. And that was back during the time when I weighed 409. Wow. Yeah, I was a real big girl and I was really sick that night because I, I thought I was going to die. And uh, Earl's pastor prayed for me and laid hands on me. And um, I did not die that night. And I was able to stand and sing that song. And God blessed me um, to, to not, you know, my, I've had some challenges with health. But he is walking me through it. And I'm just going to keep on walking until he heals everything that's wrong. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to write some music about it. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and you've also recorded your own album. Yeah, Greater Is He. Greater Is He. Um, that's, that's the first CD that we've done that has most of our mu my music you mm -hmm. know, that I've written on it. Because I did Amazing Grace on there and Precious Lord Take My Hand. But the rest of them are songs that I've written and I'm so thankful. That's what I was hoping to have here today, yeah. but don't have any yet. No, I'm going to have some. But stuff. how did it come about? Bill McGee. Um, who's a good friend of mine from Virginia State. He um, has a studio in his home. And he said that he knew, he said the Lord told him that he was supposed to help me. That he was supposed to help me. And so we didn't exactly know what that meant. Um, and then I told Bill that I had this notebook with all of these songs in it. And he said, well, let's, let's see what we do. And that's how that CD came, just doing one song, one song. And he lives in Richmond. So we had to get, you know, everybody there, you know, different times and stuff, and Juan and the, Kevin was my drummer that time, just, just getting people there to do it bits by piece. And it was, every, every CD that I've ever done, each one has gotten a little bit better um, because I don't know very much about recording, mm -hmm. um, but I know when I hear something that's right. And so I'm thankful for Greater Is He because Greater Is He is the best CD that I think that we've done thus far but there is still yet something else that's missing. And I know that this next CD, whoever it is that's supposed to help me with this next one, that's the one that's going to really, because all the, the songs are all good songs and they minister to people, um, which is the most important thing that somebody gets a mess, get the message and get some help. But it, you can't just, it, it's, it's to get it out nationally and to get it on the air, mm -hmm. people are looking for something specific. And I know it when I hear it, but I haven't been able to get it in my music yet. But I believe that the Lord is, that something is close to me that is going to open up the doors, that he is going to catapult us to a place um, that we have no idea what it is, but it's coming. Right. And my age, our ages doesn't have anything. Because I'm 63, 62, 61. I didn't know we want you to tell I'll, It's I'll, too late now. <laughs> too late. <laughs> and so, you know, we're not babies. Um, but God is, is not concerned about our ages. He just wants us to be obedient. And so that's what I believe. He's, he's, mm -hmm. gonna, he's getting ready to do something else. All right, we'll, we'll see it. And I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> now... Another thing that, you know, talking about ages, you've incorporated 
not only one other generation, but now two other generations yes. into your band. So let's hear a little from the nieces. And how did you get uh, get recruited, let's say, into uh, into Cora's group? Well, Puppy was first. Well, I'm sorry, Riss was first. <laughs> <laughs> um, we call her Puppy, but Puppy was first, so I'll let you start. They made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, actually, my debut started, I was, it, it, it was kind of like how they started. And I remember Uncora wanted me to, pop up. Her, their dad wanted me to sing Jesus, Lover of My Soul. That was my very first solo. And I was five. Wow. And I remember that day because I was crying so bad because I was all right until I had to get up there and actually do it. And she told me if she, if she would get me a Barbie doll, I, would, I was straight then. But no, I started, I, I was little as well. But then um, I, when I became a teenager, yeah. it was like I just, I, it, it just came. Now I left before, actually I left two or three yeah, times. Yeah, she quit us a few times. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm back now. <laughs> but yeah, I started off young as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just and Ruth, like that. You, you sang a lovely solo in the concert oh, today as well. So, thank yeah. You, thank you. So then I came next. Um, Mom used to travel a lot. She would sing, and that meant we would stay home with Dad. <laughs> and. Dad's babysitting was, you know, let us watch TV, get on his nerves for maybe 10 minutes, and then everybody got to go to their room. So he would always send us all to our room, and our rooms were next to each other, but me and Kim shared a room, and then our two brothers shared a room. And so we would meet in the hallway, you know, play and talk and sing or whatever, but we never did a whole lot of, you know, talent shows or anything like that. So I didn't start singing until I was older. I want to say, what, maybe like, maybe like two or three years ago. And it just kind of happened. I kind of got older and I was still living with mom and me and mom was attached at the hip for a long time. <laughs> still kind of are. And she used to call me stick. And so I used to just go and carry and you know, just make sure everybody was straight, grab shoes. And then eventually I just kind of started singing and it just kept going from there. Uh -huh. And then this one. <laughs> I am the newest member. Um, Actually, no, Kim. But yeah, I sung with them, I want to say two other occasions. Mm -hmm. I sung once, left, and then I sung again, and I left. And I was like, okay, I knew I wanted to sing because I love singing with them. I really do. I love being with my family. But I was just being pulled in other directions. So I had... Um, Choral singing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but I had decided that when the time was right, I would do it, but I would commit to it. And um, about, I think it's about a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. About a year ago, I decided that, okay, I'm ready to commit to it. I'm going to be at practice. I'm going to do whatever we got to do. Mm -hmm. And I've been here ever since. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's been phenomenal so to have them. It, it was a wonderful sound. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, just families always have that yeah, special something, yeah. you know, in their sound. Until youth. we fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Riss is the diva. Yeah, because uh, see, Rissy, Rissy has a tell sense them. of style <laughs> that none of the rest of us have. Yeah. I and didn't so like she what doesn't we wore like today. certain kinds of clothing. <laughs> so everything has got, you know, when she, you got to hear her, I don't like this. I'm not going to wear it. I'm not going to wear it. And this, like, I, you know, I just want to, yeah. you know, shake her, but, you know, <laughs> all of that's a part of <laughs> this thing. But when it's time for us to do what we need to do, yeah. we do it. Yeah. God mm -hmm. bless. I'll just fuss later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and someone's going to talk about your young drummer, right? Oh, that's my son. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Dave and, um, he taught himself how to play when he was two. Wow. Yeah, he used to, because when we were growing up, mama would have music playing all over the house. And so when I was growing up, I would do the same thing with my son. And David would go in the kitchen and get pots and pans while I'm washing the dishes and started playing. And I wouldn't mess with him because he, he had good rhythm. But even when he was six months old, Really young. I Very think, young. Yeah. And, and a little bouncer. And I didn't believe mama at first. She was like, that baby got rhythm. And I was like, no, he doesn't. And so one time, um, music playing all over the house, and David was in his little bouncer. And sure enough, 
He was bouncing to the beats of the song. <laughs> Even, I mean, fast songs, slower songs, he had rhythm then. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mama, it was just no way. I had to see it for myself. So yeah, he taught himself how to play drums when he was two. And then um, my brother um, was playing for us at mm -hmm. one time Kevin. too. But now he, he's being, he's in other directions. So now Davin's in that position. Mm -hmm. And actually Davin does his own music. He makes his own beats and mm -hmm. he does really well. So I'm really proud of him. He's a yeah. junior in high school. Yes, he is. All he's right. a junior. Help me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he was fantastic. And when I Thank saw him coming you. out, I said, you know, to have a drummer this young, he must be good. They wouldn't. Because <laughs> he was drumming with us even younger than that. Yeah. yeah. He, he was, you know, he was doing right much of that. He was yeah, we had younger. gone to a concert once, and he, was, he couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. He was standing in his mother's <laughs> lap. She's holding him. And he's clapping, you know, performing on stage. And he's clapping on time with the beat. Yeah. And people around us were saying, He's clapping. He's on time. <laughs> like, you know, it was amazing. He, he was given that early. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. So you, you mentioned some some drama experience, some some plays, uh, some yeah. about you, and some that you've been in. Yeah. Um, Tom with down at Swift Creek Mill Playhouse. Um, um, I I didn't I didn't, never thought I was an actress. I've been a singer all my life, um, and they were trying to do this play called Mahalia. And I was in this contest on Channel 8 um, TV, and the guy that was the music director at the Playhouse heard me on the contest, told Tom, you need to get in contact with this woman, because this woman is kind of like Mahalia Jackson. Big, you know, and I had hair, I didn't even. <laughs> and, um, Tom called me, and Ma said, Cor, I don't think you ought to try that. Daddy said, Go ahead and give it a shot. I went over there and auditioned and got the part, and I played Mahalia's song, 22 songs in that one play. Wow. And it just took off. And it just went, you know, and they extended the run. Um, they bought it back a second time. Um, and then Tom, just, you know, becoming my friend, talking to me and stuff about different things. I told him different things about my life as time progressed. He said, we ought to write about that. And so he interviews Ma, he interviews Callum and BB, and he writes this play called Living in the Light about my life um, with the bad husbands and all. Right. And um, I had written music. To, uh, it, it was phenomenal. It was just, and Ma was in it, and y'all were in it, telling my life story. Um, because, you know, I have a couple of babies in heaven and told, told that whole thing. Um, I'm, I had Crohn's disease, and so I'm an ileostomy, told all about that, because I'm not ashamed of any of that. You know, people need to know that yeah. you don't have to be ashamed of your life, you know, things that happen, and your physical, you know, you got to just live. And so then after, then after Tom, that just did really good. To, I mean, it was just like God's favor was on all of this. And then um, he, late, years later, Tom calls again. Ah, Mama's going to heaven. I think we ought to write one more play. Those Harvey girls. <laughs> and he writes this play about us and how it was the day that we came home from Mama's funeral. And we sitting on the porch telling stories. He's found three little girls to be us when we were little. Mm -hmm. And then he found three teenagers, which at that time, Riss was, no, Riss really wasn't a teenager, but they made her look like one. <laughs> and so Excuse they were you. our teenage <laughs> us, and us sitting on the porch telling this story. And so, I mean, it, and we were able to sing old songs. And, man, it was so fun. And at the end of the play, we're standing there, get, we're standing there together, and on the wall, they put up Mama's picture. Made me cry every night. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's been wonderful, wonderful. I'm so thankful for all of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And now people in Richmond refer to me as Virginia's Mahalia Jackson mm -hmm. because they say I sing with the power like she had. I don't, you know, profess to do that. I just do what God gives me. I'm thankful for it. All right. Yeah. So another thing about passing to the next generation is that you've been involved in some apprenticeship. Yeah, well. I had, I had, um, uh, <laughs> let 
That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. But the, and it was so fun because Samantha Willis is her name. Um, she actually is a pianist and a singer at her home church. Mm. <laughs> and so she is it's not a kid. She's got a husband and two kids. And she sings, her grandmother taught her. And her grandmother used to sing with this group called the Echoes. It was the grandmother, her sisters, and um, her daughters. Ma was friends with Miss Ella, which was the grandmother, and sang with us. So our two family groups used to go, you know, doing, uh -huh. um, you know, our paths would cross going to sing places. Yeah. And Samantha is the next generation after that. So, you know, that, it, it worked out so well that she and I got the chance. And so uh, Samantha knows a lot, but it was a few things that I could kind of like, you know, you know, suggest or whatever. Because you know how it is with women musicians, I don't know if you know or not, women <laughs> musicians can be, I don't think they're as bad as men musicians, but they can be kind of bad. Um, you know, you get to, what it makes you think that you know more than I do? <laughs> <laughs> but she wasn't like that. You know, she would take the whatever I, you know, the whatever suggestions I made or whatever. And then she helped me with some things. Mm -hmm. And we actually sang together um, at the, um, the uh, what is that, James Monroe, some place up in Charlottesville, mm -hmm. up on the mountain, last Saturday. And she and I did songs separately, and we did some songs together, and we each had a keyboard. Mm. And I played for her on some, and then we played together on some. So it was, it was really good, you know. And it was so um, touching for me, because we were at the end of this, and she came to me, and she hugged me and kissed me, and she told me thank you for everything that I had poured into her. And it just made my heart just feel so good, you know, that she appreciated our time that we had spent together. She's a sweetheart. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess one last thing, and this is more or less for everybody. <laughs> Did you ever think that you'd play at the Library of Congress? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, really, um, I know of one other group that has that I know of, and that was um, the late Maggie Ingram and the Ingramettes. Yeah. And when I heard about them, that they were going to do it, I was so excited for Almeida because Almeida is my friend. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so excited for them. And I was like, wow, Lord, look, look what, that, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's a real big opportunity. And I, could, I was like, wow. And, but you, don't, you try not to say, well, I wish I could do that because, I mean, you're know, kind of covered in somebody else's stuff. But I was like, wow. And when I got the call that, that we had been chosen, I'm trying to hold it together on the telephone, right? <laughs> but I'm screaming on the inside <laughs> because I, I, don't, I don't really understand um, the whole detail of it. But all I knew was your music is cataloged somewhere and you kind of become a part of history some kind of way. And Oh, you just don't know how much um, that makes me, I'm just so appreciative. And I know we all are to have had this opportunity to come up here and do this. And the, our family that came today, when they heard about it, it was like, you doing what? And, you know, and it's just <laughs> phenomenal. And I'm just so grateful for whoever chose us to be here to be able to do this today, because I mean, we just, you know, down to earth country people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just love the Lord, just sing and, you know, praise Him as best we can. And to be invited to do something like this. Oh, well, we, we just... were delighted to have you, thank and you. we are delighted to have done this interview. Me too. Me so too. I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.